So just to get us started, um, I wanted to ask both of you um, how you first came to Studio 54, the club. How, what was your introduction to that, to that scene like? Well, my experience was I did, never went through the front door. I only went through the back door because I came in as a film student. I came in to shoot a documentary. So the first time I went to Studio 54, I had been told it was really dark and that we probably weren't going to get any footage, that no one's, we, the, you know, it wasn't fast film or video, this was real film, and it was very limited lighting that was in there. So I wa wore a light meter, and I was dressed up thinking, oh, I'm going to this fancy nightclub, and I wore this light meter like a necklace, and I went in, and um, even the lab told us we weren't, the footage was going to turn out black. And so I, I went in, that's how I came to the studio the first time. And actually, every time I went to the studio, I came in the back door. <laughs> so I wound up, I was in high school when it opened first in uh, 1977, in April. And uh, you saw the part where they, uh, they didn't have a liquor license when they finally got a liquor license. My uncle was a politician and was friends with uh, Roy Cohen. When they went to Roy Cohen, he went to my uncle. So we wound up, my brother first, when they got the license, he got a job. I was working, I moved into Manhattan, I was working in a restaurant and going there every night and I was like, uh-uh, I want to work here too. <laughs> but that was, we got paid twice for that job. <laughs> so. um, and Susan, when you, um, how did you get the idea, like, oh hey, I'm going to make a documentary about Studio 54? Well, I was, I was an NYU film student, I was 19 years old, and I, my, I was, I guess, majoring in cinematography and I was shooting anyone's film. So I shot a lot of films in film school, and this other film student, Glenn Albin, who's, um, who's my partner on this, he's the one who got permission. He was a regular at the studio, and he asked Michael Overington, who was the manager, whether he could shoot a documentary there, and Michael had been a film, NYU film student a few years before. And because of that, he said yes to Glenn. And no one else ever had a camera in Studio 54. That was what, how they kept privacy. We were the only film that was ever shot there. And I, Steve knew about that we were shooting, but I was told that if I saw Ian, I had to hide. So I never met Ian, I always hid. <laughs> I was like under the bar, under the couch, wherever I could be, that if I saw him, I had a duck. And I had a big camera, I mean, they, you know, it was a big CP16 camera, and we, we were there for two weeks shooting. Wow. Um, and so when you were both approached about this film, what, what, did, you, what did you think? Were you... Uh, <coughs> Surprise? We were, you know, uh, we call ourselves the class of 54, so uh, so we were, you know, we, we all stayed in touch and about 10 years ago we started getting together regularly and uh, Myra uh, Shear, who was Stephen and Ian's assistant, is a very dear friend of mine and has been since that time, so she's kind of like our den mother. So. They, when they started, when Matt and Corey started the project, uh, Myra and Mark uh, were, are involved in the uh, Sirius Radio, uh, which, you know, I guess has sparked a whole new interest. This is a Studio 54 radio channel that Sirius launched. So we, you know, we all stayed together. So when Matt and, um, uh, and Corey were looking to uh, do this, obviously they wanted to get our perspective of uh, what happened. So uh, that's how we got involved, and mostly through Myra. My experience was a little different because I had the footage. I had moved, I, I'm a filmmaker, and I had moved to LA with the footage, and I moved back. A little bit of it, about three minutes of it, was used in the VH1 um, documentary that was playing for a few years yeah. on Studio about Studio 54. And then I moved back to LA, and I met this woman who's in the film, who Michelle. Galliard, who is um, Ian's assistant now, or was recently Ian's assistant, and I told her I had this footage. Was, this was about seven years ago, long before this film had this life. And so they knew I had the footage, and then Myra was interested in trying to do something with it, and it, so it's been sort of a few years in the making. Thank uh, you for making it. Really a yeah. I, I told her earlier that her footage made a documentary into a film because it's spectacular. It gives me goosebumps watching it, truly. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, thank you again. It was absolutely wonderful. It brought back good memories. I, I was fortunate enough to be there once. Um, 
Susan, when you were filming, like all the interior shots, all the all the filming of the dancing, all that, is most of that yours? And like nobody seemed to mind that you had your camera. Uh, yeah, just to re repeat the question for anybody. Who yeah. um, the question was uh, when you were shooting and you know, you were filming the dance floor, and anybody seemed to mind that you were shooting them. No, not really. I mean, everyone's pretty oblivious, and I was pretty oblivious. <laughs> I did have a large crew. I mean, basically, to be honest, the crew that we had, most of them, once we got inside, disappeared. So, <laughs> so I was on my own most of the time with the camera, and I, I was on the dance floor. I was just dancing with the camera, you know, filming people literally with the camera, because um, it really nobody seemed to mind at all. It was, yeah. Well, everybody there was a little bit of a spectator, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, outgoing to say the least, <laughs> uninhibited. <laughs> Uh, uh, the question is, uh, what led to Ian Schrager's interest in, in making the film, if you have any questions. From what I heard from uh, Myra, because we've had this discussion numerous times, it was when uh, Sirius Radio started, uh, you know, wanted to get Ian involved in the launch of, uh, of the Sirius Radio, you know, Studio 54 radio channel. And the night, you know, uh, they all worked, including Michael, uh, worked on recreating Studio 54 at Studio 54 to kick that off. Uh, Ian went to, uh, was, you know, obviously, he was at the, uh, that premiere party, and he brought his daughters. And uh, they had no idea that, that, that he was all that. And I think that his children, hearing these stories, and it, that's what got him involved. And that's what, you know, then finally, I guess, 40 years, you know, uh, looking in the rearview mirror, Everything is bittersweet, but you know sometimes the bad memories fade, the good memories get better. So I guess that was basically it. I also think that he was very reticent about talking about the studio for all those years because of the bad that happened. But I, I, one of the things that I really enjoyed about this process is um, Matt, uh, one of the first things they did was show Ian the footage. The footage that I shot, and we they filmed Ian watching the footage because he still wasn't really talking. He had agreed to do it, but he really wasn't talking to them. So <laughs> watching him to see the footage, it brought him back. And from that point on, from what Matt told me, is when he really started to open up and talk. It really brought back the. And you even see you even see that uh, Matt captured him squirming. You know, he was he's uncomfortable about it and uh, you know being an introvert and he was very it's an uncomfortable time because uh, you know it was tough you know, to, they did go to jail <laughs> it was the end of it I am a little bit, and uh, but you, you know, I can only give you my perspective of it. Uh, some of it has to do with obviously uh, iPhones, <laughs> because you couldn't get away with that today when everybody's filming. Uh, you know, Susan elaborated that the she was basically the only real footage that was shot in there. Uh, the photographers, the paparazzi that we allowed in, uh, we controlled what they did. So. The shots that they, you know, uh, they got, uh, most of them were set up by us, and if they, you know, if they abru abused that privilege, they weren't getting back in. You know, then they were standing out in the cold trying to get pictures of people coming into the club or wherever else they were going. Here they were inside with a beer in their hand, they were nice and comfy, uh, so that aspect of it, you know, uh, you know, was very controlled in that sense. The other aspect, I think, is, uh, you know, they touched on it in the film about everything now being about money. Uh, clubs you go to today, it's not about how cool you are, it's about how much you're going to spend. I'm going to buy a table, I'm going to buy a bottle, 
that type of thing. So that takes all the sexy out of it. Uh, and then obviously AIDS put the kibosh on the whole thing because after AIDS, nightlife got segregated again. So uh, that's my point of view. Yeah, I think it was the mix of all the different kinds of people together and just the total in lack of inhibition. Nobody that was, everyone was open and free and everyone danced with each other and there was just that openness of um, everyone moving and dancing and now everyone's filming each other, taking pictures and standing <laughs> off to the side. And there's not, I, I, I would love to create a, you know, some evening where we four wall the footage and let people dance within the studio again. Yeah, you know, experience that. One last question over here. Um, so why didn't you, you never did anything with the footage before this? I mean, you went, you got in there to shoot a documentary, right? <laughs> the question is, is, is what, what happened to the footage? Our student project was a 15 minute short. And we did it, and we finished, and we graduated, and we have, I have a 15 minute short, which is some of this footage and some other footage. And, you know, it was a student project, and that's what it was for. and. I've made a lot of other films and I haven't saved the footage for some reason of any of the other films, but th this footage I just saved all these years, I just, I don't really know why I did, but I'm glad I did. Yeah. Yeah. We're all going to do that. We have to have a wrong idea. No, I just have to say, I used to go there all the time, and I really have to say, you caught the energy and everything. Because it was like you said, when you came through those doors and everything, you ran toward the dance floor. Yeah. And everybody did. It just danced together. You know, it was fabulous. Um, I guess to to wrap this whole thing up, uh, if you just wanted to give a, a couple of last words about what you think about this film and what you hope people will carry with them for for this film. What what are your hopes for for the audiences who, who watch this? You can go first. <laughs> I just hope everyone like can feel that energy that existed for a brief moment in time. It was a magical moment that came and went, and it, 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 you know, the, these two guys made it happen, but it was also all the people and all everyone that was there that made it happen. And I, you know, it was a very special like, moment in time, so we want to share that and hope everyone gets that bit of magic. Yeah, like I said earlier, the, you know, the footage turned it into a film, and I'll just, one of my favorite parts was when Sandy was talking about the first time you went there and you walked down that hall. Uh, it was so grand, the gilded mirrors, but you heard the music when you first got in, but as it, you got closer, it got louder and louder and louder, and they captured that in the film because they did it with the music. And when you got into the room where it opened up in the bar and in the dance floor, it just overtook you. And they did a great job of making, I know I felt it because it gave me goosebumps. And I hope they, I hope you guys, you know, got the feel if you've never been there. Thank you. Thank you. Thursday, so please tell your friends. Um, it might be held over longer. Um, check back on Monday for more.